The purpose of this video is to display the advantages of 3D CS tolerance analysis integrated into a CAD system. This happens to be CATIA V5 and inside the start menu under analysis simulation <clears throat> you can see 3D CS is right here so we are a workbench. There are four main inputs to doing a tolerance analysis model. CAD data, moves, how the part gets assembled, tolerances, the variation on the detail level piece parts that represent how the parts can be manufactured, and measurements, what it is we want to analyze. When you are in an integrated CAD system with our product, you get to utilize the advantages of PMI, Product Manufacturing Information. In our software, that consists of the GD&T that you can see here, and moves or joints and constraints that define how the product gets assembled. If I expand this base in the CATIA tree, you can see that this part has got embedded FTNA or PMI. You can also visually see it here on the graphics. If I scroll down, you can also see that the model has constraints as well as joints. If this information already exists in your CATIA model, then building a 3 dcs model becomes quite simple. I can come over here and click on update GD&T. Well, before I do that, let's expand the DCS tree and you can see there's um, no GD&T, there's a DCS tolerance, there's no GD&T in the base. If I come over here and I hit update GD&T and I pick the part, you can see it extracted 15 GD&T callouts. Any feature of a part that is used for assembly, tolerancing, or measurements, we will create a mesh. And so you can see we added this mesh on these surfaces. This surface here is non-functional to my tolerance analysis, so it didn't get a mesh on it. Now by extracting that GD&T, I can just hit deviate and now you can see 3DCS applying this defined variation to the detail level part. Because I know I also have joints and constraints, I can click on this button and grab the top product. Oops, first I have to uh, add the license. And now you can see that we extracted from the CAD system the moves that define how these parts go together. Basically, two of my required inputs just got finished. Now I can do a nominal build, I can deviate, and you can see we are building an assembly with variation. This happens to be a mechanical model with motion, and it hap happened to have multiple constraint methods. I'm going to turn off the motion move and turn on this contact move. So this is going to make this surface stay in contact with this face. Now I can build it. I can turn off the mesh. <coughs> so it's not in my way and you can see that now I'm building an assembly with variation. The only thing that's left is a measurement. What is it that we want to measure? I want to measure the distance from here to here. So that is not an auto extraction yet <clears throat> and you do have to use our workbench and I'm going to create that measurement live for you by saying measure 
It asks me where do I want to put the measure. I want it to be in the top product. I'm going to add a point distance measure. I want to measure between two points and I'm going to pick them. I want this point and this point. And I want it to not vary more than plus or minus one millimeter. When I say OK, now you can see I have a measurement here. If I do a nominal build and I go into that measurement, the nominal distance is 38.31. This model is essentially complete at this point, so I can hit deviate, pause it, and build number 23, the gap is 38.92. So, of the four inputs to do a tolerance analysis model, if you have the integrated 3DCS, you get the CAD for free. You're already in your CAD system. You get the tolerances for free if you if you have embedded FTNA. You just click a single button. If you have joints and constraints inside your model under mechanism or constraints, then you hit this button here and you get the moves. <clears throat> you saw me write the one measurement, so now I can build the model and run an analysis. At this point, just for time-saving purposes, I will build a hundred double switch assemblies. And here's my measurement and you can see the results that you get here. Let me go ahead and uh, modify my uh, display. And so now it's telling you what your nominal distance is. My range of variation is seven millimeters and it's listing which tolerance on which feature in which part, what was the input tolerance and the percent cause of this overall variation. This information is also displayed directly on the parts. So if I click here, you can see it's highlighting. That's my number one cause of variation. That pins number two cause than the profile tolerance on this face. All of this information can get dumped out into an auto report by hitting this button right here. If I hit this button, I can say I want the GDT in my report, any DCS tolerances, my moves, how I put it together, and my measurements. <clears throat> I can create this report in HTML, Excel, PowerPoint, or Word. I'm going to zoom this in, and I'm going to create an HTML report. So it's going through, and it's taking snapshots, and then you can see this is the cover page. Double switch, created by me, demonstration purposes. It has a model summary. Here's your simulation results. I only have put one measurement in the model. If you have multiple measurements, you can sort your data based on the highest variation to the lowest. And you can see it took a picture of where that measurement actually is. As well as model input, if I go to my assembly sequence, I can mouse over and it shows you how this model was put together. So all the information in this model you get in an auto report with a click of a button here. This is a very fast presentation to give you a little background of the advantages of tolerance analysis in an integrated system. 
Thank you very much.